Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories, let's start to story. AITA for wanting to expose my stepfather's secrets to his children? I 21 am, and I ended up in foster care at 9 years old because of the abuse I suffered at the hands of my stepfather, a man my mom kept choosing over me. Despite all the support and interventions that were supposed to protect me, my mom refused to kick him out. Even after she had a restraining order against him, she still let him back into our lives. Meanwhile, she went on to have two more children with this man, my half-brothers, who are now 19 Richie and 16 James. It got to the point where it was evident that no matter what, she would keep letting him back into our lives. Eventually, I was removed from the home. After I was removed, my mom was allowed to keep and raise my brothers as if nothing had happened. From what I know, my stepdad never laid a hand on them. My mom and this man are still together, I know, because I've checked her Facebook more times than I'd like to admit. Growing up it was devastating to realize that my mom would rather give me up than fight for me. She could have kept me if she'd just left him, but she didn't. This abandonment left me with deep scars and a lot of issues to deal with as I grew up. It didn't help that she cut off all contact with me, almost as soon as I was placed in foster care. She wouldn't even show up for court-ordered visits. Foster care was also really rough for me, I bounced around three different families, and it wasn't until the last one that I got any therapy to help me make sense of what had happened. A few days ago, out of nowhere, I got a Facebook message from Richie and James. They said they've been thinking about me a lot and want to get to know me. They even mentioned that our mom talks about me sometimes and wonders how I'm doing. They said they'd like to start some relationship if I'm open to it, and Richie said he would be willing to drive them to visit me wherever I am in the country. They both seem nice in their message, and I don't have an issue with either. At first, I was going to ignore the message, because I didn't want anything to do with my biological family. But then a darker thought crossed my mind, this could be my only chance to expose my stepdad to the monster he truly is. I could finally tell my half-brothers everything he did to me, everything he put me through, and let the truth come crashing down on them. If I do this, I know it'll probably destroy any chance of having a relationship with them, but honestly, I'm not sure I want one anyway. I told my friend that I was thinking about doing this, and he said it was a terrible idea that wouldn't accomplish anything I wanted it to. He said it would most likely just cause them to think I'm bitter and mean and won't make them have any issues with their dad. Well, I know it would not be easy to process, but I would want to know if my dad was like that. I would want to see how my dad treated other children. I wonder how much they know about why I was removed from care. Update Hey everyone, I wanted to come back and give you all an update. First off, thanks for all the advice and different perspectives. I needed to hear them. So after thinking a lot about what everyone said and after having a session with my therapist, I realized that my initial plan to tell my brothers everything about my stepdad wasn't really about helping them. It was more about me still holding on to the anger and hurt from my past, and that's not fair to them. Many of you pointed out that they probably don't know the whole story and are innocent. And honestly, that hit hard. I contacted Richie and told him I'd like to meet up. I didn't mention anything about our mom or the stepdad situation. If we were to start a relationship, it's better to take things slow and not dump all that heavy stuff on them immediately. We ended up meeting at a cafe. I was super nervous, but when I saw them, it felt nice. They were both adorable, and we just talked about standard stuff, like what we've been up to, our favorite football teams, that sort of thing. It was weirdly easy to chat with them. At one point, James asked why I was placed in foster care. That caught me off guard, but I decided to keep it vague and just said that things were complicated at home back then, and that going into care was what was best for me at the time. James started pushing for more details, but Richie told him to knock it off, which was a relief. By the end of it, I was glad I went. They asked if we could stay in touch, and I said yes. I'm still figuring out how much to share about what happened, but I'm focusing on building a relationship with them now. I realize that while the past is essential, it doesn't have to dictate how things go with them now. So yeah, thanks again to everyone who helped me see things clearer. I'm feeling much more hopeful about this, and I'm happy I didn't just go with my gut reaction to tell them everything immediately. We'll see where things go.
but I'm cautiously optimistic. I don't know if anyone cares about this, but I wanted to give a minor update. Before anything, I read a lot of your comments. So many were saying I was selfish for wanting to expose my stepdad, and then so many were saying I was a coward for not. Some people were saying I was allowing the abuser to get away with it by not telling my brothers. I had DMs calling me an abuse apologist. People called me a liar for not answering James's question when we first met. I never said I was never going to talk to them about my past. In my last post, I said I was still working on sharing my past in a healthy way, with help from my therapist. And yet I had people acting like they knew best and that I should tell them both immediately. So many people are arguing about it one way or the other. It does seem like whatever I do, there will be issues and I will upset someone. I know that and I am trying to navigate this in my own way, so please respect that even if you have done it differently. I am in no way letting my stepdad get away with the abuse. I tried everything I could as a child slash teen to get him prosecuted. I have accepted that that will never happen. Just know I am a natural person who reads the comments, not everything I do is perfect. But please just be kind. I don't say this to stop people from giving me advice, I love advice. Just be positive and kind. I don't need more negativity. Anyway, in the week since my last post, I've met up with my brothers thrice. Once with both and twice, it was just me and Richie. There was an instant bond between us, which I didn't even know I wanted. I love hanging out with them, which is fantastic because I didn't even think I ever wanted to see any of my family again, never mind start developing a good relationship with some of them. When I last met Richie alone, we watched a movie and grabbed something to eat. We talked about our plans and what he's doing now. And we got to talking about me and foster care. I asked him what he had been told about me growing up. He said they hadn't been told much, but our mom sometimes talks about me. I asked him what he remembered of me and why I was taken into care. He said he had some fuzzy, clear memories, but didn't know what happened. He said he remembered a lot of fighting and arguing between me and our stepdad. He said he had one apparent memory of me, but didn't know whether it was appropriate to share it. He asked me what I remembered, and I said talking about it with people was difficult. He said he understood if I didn't want to get into it. I started crying, and he apologized for bringing it up, but I told him not to. I was glad he at least remembered some things about my abuse. He said he guessed that the abuse by our stepdad was the reason I was taken away. I said yeah. I asked if our stepdad ever abused either of them, and he said he hadn't. But he said he wasn't close to our mom or dad. He said they weren't ever amazingly loving people, but never abused them. He apologized again. We spoke some more about our childhood. I felt safer talking about the abuse since he already remembered some of it. We delved deeper into it. I tried answering his questions, and he answered some of mine. He asked if the trauma still impacts me now, and I said yes. He apologized for not being there for me or sticking up for me, I reassured him that nothing happened was his fault or mine and that we couldn't change the past. After we finished, we both went to our own homes. He messaged me later, saying he was glad I grew up and managed to keep living. He meant it sweetly, even though it came off a little weird. I feel amazed that I have a brother who seems to care about me, I couldn't have imagined that he would even like me a few weeks ago. Thank you for listening to today's story. Have a nice day.